Hi and welcome back to 8-Bit Resurgence. Today we're going to be talking about the 1581. I know you've heard a lot about 1581s and there have been plenty of videos made about the 1581, but today we're going to be talking about my board and some of the changes that I've applied to it and then uh, and its implication to installing it in a case and then we're also going to do something that you've probably never seen before and that's put it into a very special case and I'll describe that in a little bit. Uh, so stay tuned and uh, we'll get right into it. So today it's all about um, my latest 1581 board. Um, it's a board that I've had finished for quite a while now. In all honesty, I should have done a video on this board a long time ago, but I didn't. So you get to see it today. It's uh, a board I finished uh, late last year and it came um, to be as a result of a conversation that I had with a friend of mine. Um, he had uh, built a 1581 board and he wanted to put it into one of those laser cut plexiglass cases and uh, he wanted to have LEDs in it. So he was going to wire in some LEDs all over the place and some strips here and there and wire it into the board. When he told me about it I thought why don't we just put the LEDs on the board instead of all this wiring throughout the case? Uh, I might make for a cleaner look and, and maybe it'll look good. So we both agreed that that would probably be a, a cool thing to do. So that became uh, one of my projects on my to-do list. Um, around uh, towards the end of 2023, I finished that and uh, that resulted in a board with a whole ton of LEDs incorporated right into the board. And I guess I'll start off by showing you what the prototype looks like in a uh, 3D printed case. It's the um, 3D printed case that I designed. And uh, it, it's very reminiscent of the original case. It looks very similar other than having the uh, PC drive exposed in the, uh, the face. You can see right there. So the PC drive um, sticks out the front and I rever revised the underside so that it would print much nicer on an FDM drive. So this is the drive. This has the original prototype uh, PCB in it and I'll switch it on and you can see um, what the lights do. Now it is a little bit washed out because of the bright lights I have in here. Uh, I'll probably throw up a, a picture of it in ambient room lighting. It really glows a whole lot more in ambient light. Uh, but here you can see um, I have red LEDs installed on the board. Uh, you can see how it shines through the sides. Uh, through the top. Of course the drive mechanism is here and it uh, pro blocks the light. Um, but the light does travel through the case. You see it a lot more, like I said, in ambient light. But uh, there's lights all over. And when I originally had planned on, um, once we had decided that this was going to be a project I was going to do, at first I wanted to put LEDs just on the top and later I thought, well, why don't I do that on both sides? So I ended up putting 28 LEDs on the board. There's 14 on the top and 14 on the bottom. So let's have a look at the board. And then uh, not only did I put LEDs on the board, but I also made some revisions to the board as well to make it better and easier to build. 
So let's have a look at that. So this is what the board looks like um, inside the case. This is, of course, the finished version. The other one has um, some bodge wires here and there where I had to fix things up. But uh, essentially, it's the same board. Um, this board has all of the same features that you saw in the previous um, revisions of my board. There's the alternate power circuit here. And on this particular board uh, that I built, I built this one as a standard board. It doesn't have the LEDs. Later, I'll show you one that does. Uh, but this one has the alternate power circuit here. Uh, I also ended up removing all the surface mounted jumpers on the board. That's here, here, and here. And those jumpers are a pain for builders. If you haven't done surface mounted jumpers before, I've heard of people burning the jumpers off the board and then you've got a whole other pile of problems with your board if you happen to do that because then it becomes even more difficult to configure the board if you don't have those convenient pads there to short, then you're looking at jumpering traces, which is um, much more difficult. So I thought, well, eliminate that whole problem, get rid of those surface mounted jumpers and just put pin jumpers in. That way, if you uh, never plan on reconfiguring it, you can just, um, jumper it uh, the way you want it with wires if you want if you don't want to put pin headers and jumpers on there or just put pin headers and put a jumper here and there wherever you need to for the um, the configuration you want as per the build materials that has all the information in it i've updated the build materials as well on the github so uh, if you follow with you know, you want to follow through the build there. It gives you a lot of uh, pointers in that now that weren't in the previous one. Uh, I had to rerun a lot of traces on this board because of course the perimeter of the board where all the LEDs run on the top and the bottom, they were already occupied with traces for the 1581 PCB. So I had to pull all those back and make room for the run the trace run for all of the leds and i had to do that on the top and the bottom when i decided to illum illuminate the bottom of the board as well so i moved the traces around made some space for this on the top and bottom and then those are run over to this point here there's another a new pin header here and that allows you to connect a switch if you want so you could uh, enable or disable the LEDs uh, on your drive. The way it's configured or the way it's wired up is you, when you turn on the power switch, the lights come on with it. When you turn off the drive, the lights turn off. Uh, but if you want to permanently disable them, uh, you could put a switch on that, that pin header there and uh, you could turn it on and off when the drive's on, or you can just put a pin header there and enable it permanently or remove it to disable the, the LEDs. It's really your choice. All the remaining pin headers on here are the same. Uh, these, are, these two are for the, uh, the device number. If you're setting it up as a dual drive, the dual drive functionality still exists on this board. Uh, this is the IEC link for between a second board and this one. And there's a power pass through where you can pass that over the power from there over to your other board. So all those connections still exist. However, I did move the components around a little bit uh, to allow for better access um, because it was a little bit cramped before. So this is the board. Uh, again, it, it's uh, configured as a regular 1581. I didn't put all the lights or the additional alternate power supply on there. I did this time utilize the resistors here instead of resistor packs, primarily because I ran out of those resistor packs when I was building this. 
if you look at the back, this is uh, essentially it looks the same as the previous uh, iterations of the board with the exception of the 14 uh, different positions for the LEDs. There's two sets of SMD solder pads. There one is for the LED, the other one is for a resistor. And that's a current limiting resistor, depending on how bright you want them and depending on what uh, color you choose for an LED, the resistor value may need to change. So you'll have to experiment if you're not using just a regular red. Uh, on mine, when I use the regular red, it's just a typical red LED that I used and I used a 1K resistor. When you do assemble this, I do recommend if you are putting the LEDs on this board that you should solder those on first. That way you have a lot of room to maneuver. It is SMD soldering, so you have to be um, careful. It's a little bit tedious. If you haven't done it before, just take your time and use solder paste, hold it down with something, a, a little tweezers or a toothpick or something, hold it in place and then just touch some solder on each side and that'll solder it in place nicely. Now I'm going to show you the original final destination for this board. And my friend, he wanted to put it in, as I said, into a laser cut case. And uh, so I have a laser cut case here with it installed. So you're going to be able to see what it looks like and what it was meant to look like in that case, because that was ultimately the plan for this board. But before I go on, I just wanted to say that um, PCB Way did supply these PCBs to me um, for this project. Uh, they were a collaborator in, in providing these. They provided top quality boards. Um, I've always been very happy with uh, the boards that they've provided. I've never had any problems with them. And uh, when I assemble them, they just work. And that's, that's ultimately what you want with a PCB and a PCB manufacturer. Their quality... Um, their quality control is right up there. I never run into any problems with them and they are absolutely my PCB manufacturer of choice. Um, if you're running in, if you're running any uh, projects yourself and uh, you're looking for a PCB manufacturer, I do highly recommend PCB Way. They have great deals on PCBs. They ship quick and they're top quality. So I do recommend them. So let's have a look at the laser cut um, case with this board in it. And then um, after that, we're gonna do something kind of special that you've probably never seen before. We're going to be assembling um, the, uh, the illuminated board into a case that that's the second part of the PCB way collaboration that uh, that they've done in this project and it's a case that they've produced um, that you have probably never seen anything quite like it so I'm not gonna say any more about it until uh, we get through the laser cut case and you can see what that uh, ultimately was supposed to look like and then we'll move on to the most exciting part of this and that's uh, I'll be showing you what we're going to do with that illuminated board next. All right so this is the laser cut case that was the original intended destination for this project. Uh, as you can see it has a, a tinted top you can see right through into the top of the drive. It has a black drive uh, tinted face and you can see uh, the PCB through the underside so it is a, a transparent case it has stacked layers of uh, laser cut acrylic on the sides uh, so you can't really see through you can see a little bit it's not fully transparent but it does uh, allow you to see through 
So we'll uh, apply power and you can see the lights. So there again in very bright lights, uh, but uh, in ambient lighting, it it's a little bit more impressive. So you can see the light shining through here. Uh, if I lift up the drive and you can see here, you can see the lights shining through the face. Uh, it looks very nice. I'm very pleased with, with how this drive turned out in terms of uh, how the, uh, the lights shine through. And there's really a lot of different things you can do with this drive. Uh, you could, uh, when you're building it, if you wanted, say, a bit of an eerie blue glow underneath your drive, you could put blue LEDs underneath, and then you could put red ones on the top, or you could put green ones, or yellow, or it could look like a disco, and you could put uh, RGB rotating, um, slow fade, uh, high speed flashing, different colors. There's really a lot of different things you can do with um, the LEDs on this board to make it really unique and, and your own. So that's, that's the board installed in a laser cut case. I think it, uh, it turned out very nice. It's, it's an attractive looking case, certainly different from your typical uh, 1581 case that you see. So that's that. So now the next part I'm going to talk about is something that I was discussing with PCB Way after I, I, we did the collaboration on this uh, version 2.5 LED edition board. Uh, they had asked if I had uh, looked at any of their other services. So I, I was poking around on their website and I uh, saw course they do 3d printing as well and so I thought okay well let's see what kind of 3d printing they do I do FDM printing myself and I've I for about a year or so maybe two I've been uh, working with resin printing so that's that's kind of cool that's uh, a lot higher end finish out of out of resin printing and I saw that they they have all sorts of different different methods of printing. And what caught my eye was their transparent. And they, uh, they had a, a, an example on the screen of uh, a resin printed, a transparent resin print. And I thought, wow, you know, it looked really clear. So I was talking to them and I said, you know, we should showcase that. And I think with this LED uh, board that it could really be a, a remarkable looking device so they agreed and so we what we did is we took my case which is this guy here we've taken we took this case which is this is uh, a version of my case that I've I 3d printed in a silver filament and we printed it in their transparent it's a resin transparent print and quite honestly when I opened the box I was absolutely floored I've never seen anything as good as that and I've been printing for over 10 years now I've been doing 3d printing and going on two years for resin printing so I've seen a lot and I've seen a lot of what you can do with 3d printing but this thing is at a whole new level. So rather than talking about it, continuing to talk about it more, here is this transparent case. Now you probably can't see too much of it because it's completely clear. And when I say it's clear, it's clear like glass. This thing, it's better than injection molding because injection molding leaves marks, you know, pin marks where it gets pushed out of the, out of the mold. This thing has no marks on it. There's no marks on it as to where it was adhered to the print bed. Nothing. This It's like looking through glass. So here, I'm going to try to show it to you in, in this overhead camera. 
you know, it is completely transparent. So you're going to see my hands through everything and it's and reflections really. So this is the case that they produced. It is phenomenal. It's, it's so clear. It's like looking through glass from the late 1800s, maybe around then when they, you know, where it was um, a little bit wavy because they couldn't get the consistency or whatever. You know, I've, I found that older glass, like real old glass was a little bit wavy and you kind of get a little bit of that effect, not a whole lot, but you get a little bit of that effect. But otherwise, I mean, it is as clear as you can get. This is, I wouldn't need, I would go so far as calling it clear rather than transparent. It's, although um, it's the same thing. It's just to distinguish it from transparent filaments or translucent filaments, this thing is like glass. So when I got this thing, what I did is I, it was shipped to me, of course, in four pieces. There's the, the face is one piece, the, uh, the top, the bottom, and then inside there's a tray that holds the drive. And I'll show those in, uh, in the 3D, the FDM 3D printed, so you can see this here is the tray. It's uh, just a piece of plastic with some mounting holes where the drive mounts to it and then where this tray mounts inside the case to hold the drive in the right position. And then there are these pieces here. There's, if it wants to let go, there's the bottom. And then there's the top. And there's the face. Now when I designed this, I designed it with um, very tight tolerances. It's when you print this thing, or when I print this thing, or when you print it, you can print this thing yourself as well. Uh, it's really tight. And there's a little bit of trimming you have to do to, to make it fit properly. And I did that on purpose. I didn't want it because every 3D printer is a little bit different. There, there are inconsistencies. Sometimes they don't print exactly as they should. Uh, so I made it fairly tight and it just needs a little bit of uh, tweaking when you do uh, want to assemble it. And the tweaking that you have to do primarily has to do with these hooks. So there are these hooks here, right here. You can see that. There's a hook there and there's a hook here in the lid. And what that does is that locks in against this ridge that's built into the lid. And then this is recessed along this edge to fit inside this edge here. And when it comes off the printer, it doesn't necessarily want to go into that groove. You have to make sure that that groove is cleared out. And the, the top little edges here, the top corners of this case need to be trimmed a little bit. And that just allows you to get a real nice tight fit into um, the groove on the face. And that kind of thing still has to be done on the transparent case or the clear case that PCB Way printed for me. And now PLA is, which is what I primarily print in on the FDM printer, PLA is, is rather forgiving and quite robust. You can kind of jam that, this face on if even if you haven't trimmed it 100%, it'll more than likely just lock in if you force it. But resin prints are different. They're more brittle. Uh, the resin that I use to print on my printer, it's quite brittle. Uh, if I try to manhandle a part like this 
on resin it would probably break so I was a little bit nervous about uh, trying to force anything on this clear model so what I did was um, I very very carefully trimmed those areas so I'm going to open this up and I'm going to show you the areas where I trimmed so if you ever do decide to um, have PCB way make one of these cases for you then uh, you're going to know exactly where to trim it and roughly how much there's only a few areas that really need to be trimmed and again small amount so let's open this up so also this case does not come with heat sets but heat sets is something that I always do on all my cases and uh, this is no exception now inserting inserting heat sets into inserting heat sets into resin is a whole different story uh, resin doesn't melt like PLA does so you have to insert them a little bit differently how I did it on a re how I do it on a resin print is I drill out the holes where the the heat sets go so for example there's a heat set here and here and there's one in the face to hold the LED what I do is I successfully successively um, increase the the hole size so as not to stress the resin as I'm drilling it so the the size I use machine um, screws Sorry, I used machine drill bits to drill it out. So the first drill bit I used was 2.83 millimeters. Then once they were all drilled out to that, I drilled it out to 2.96 millimeters, then 3.15, and then 3.37 was the last um, diameter drill bit that I used. Now the heat sets, the M2 heat set, brass heat sets that I use are 3.49 millimeters. In diameter so just you know point what is it point one two difference of a millimeter not much but it's enough that you can simply press the heat set into the hole now that's not good enough you know you've got the heat sets in the holes now you have to secure them so once you've jammed it in there you've you pull the heat set out again so you get a like a long m2 screw you thread it in and you pull that you wiggle that heat set out again try pulling it straight up don't try to rock it because you don't want to crack the plastic then you um, get some crazy glue put a little puddle on the cap and then just spin with with the, that screw um, it threaded into the heat set just rotate the perimeter of the heat set in the crazy glue and then press it back in. And because you pressed it in once, it's gonna go in a lot easier than it did the first time. And then the crazy glue is gonna bond from the heat set to the resin and they're gonna be locked in there um, as if it was manufactured that way. So that's how I'm gonna be um, attaching everything in this case as I do with all of my builds I use um, heat sets and the modifications that you need to make to this case rather simple um, when you get this you'll like with with the uh, FDM the the top of the case there's a, a slot in a groove in the, the top of the face and the case sits in there and then it rotates on to that this lip here like I showed you earlier and these hooks hold it in place now the hooks are where it's quite tight and it's quite tight on this corner and this corner here just in the overlap section when you get the case in your hand, you'll see what I mean. 
uh, all you have to do is you need a nice sharp exacto put some gloves on so you don't slip and cut yourself and then very carefully knock this edge off here and it's I don't know if you can see it's the back edge of the hook on the face you just knock that edge off both sides and then you just clean and you also need in order for it to sit nice and tight in here you just need to clean this this area up where it hits so you'll you'll spend a bit of time I spent probably about 45 minutes just playing with this setting it on not pushing too hard you know you want to see where it's hitting where it's rubbing where it needs a little bit more material removed and uh, until it just slides over that with a bit of resistance not a whole ton of resistance because again you don't want to put a lot of stress on this resin and break it because then you're going to be gluing and you're not going to get the nice clear effect uh, that you have or had when you when you bought this thing so that's all you really have to do in order to make this thing assemble nicely really no different than you have to do with an FDM printed case it's just there's a little bit higher stakes because this is a little bit pricey and uh, I'll tell you how much it is but not quite yet because I don't want you uh, going oh my god that's too much money and then just leaving because you really need to see what this drive looks like and what value you have in this drive when it's done because you're going to end up with a drive that probably will cost you as much as a used 1581 on eBay. But this drive is going to be, if you were to put it on eBay once you're done, you probably get twice that. Because nobody's nobody has a, a drive that looks like this. And if you are at all into clear, uh, transparent peripherals for your machine or for your retro gear this is something that uh, that people will dig I mean these are really nice so let's go ahead now and uh, take the illuminated board like the one you saw in the laser cut case and let's install it in this and uh, and see what it looks like Okay, here is the illuminated board. You can see it's somewhat different from the previous one that I showed you. It's got the, um, it has the alternate power supply installed and it has all the LEDs. And when I, I have a, it connected to power here and when I turn it on, you can see all the lights light up on the perimeter. And if I remove this jumper here, you can see they go out. So that's what I was talking about earlier. You can put a switch on that if you like and turn the lights on and off. And there's the underside, all illuminated. Uh, like I said, you can put any color that you want on these, um, these boards. So let's switch that off and let's put this uh, into the transparent case. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll take out this we'll take out the, uh, the drive mount and we're going to put this board into the case. So it simply goes in like any other 1581 board. Uh, holes line up. This is a uh, a slightly different um, version of the case that then you would get. I have uploaded the STL files to PCBWay, my shared project site, and you will be able to order this particular case for your 1581 if you like, or use any of their other 3D printed ser services. 
Maybe you want to have it printed uh, on an FDM printer. Maybe you want a solid color resin. You know, they have all sorts of different uh, 3D printed printing options available. And uh, I, I'm just blown away by the quality, quite honestly. It, it's really fantastic. So anyway, the, the difference between this case is I use a, uh, a large, a taller switch. I got these switches from Jamico because I'm a little cheap and they were a lot cheaper than the standard uh, switch that you find on a 64 or a 1581. So this particular case has a, a, a rectangular hole instead of a square one for the switch. Uh, the, the case that I've put up on PCB Way Shared Projects is the standard switch and uh, you'll be able to print that from PCB Way. So let's attach the board. Again, I have all the heat sets in place. So I just have to screw, put all the screws in and, uh, and then the board will be installed. So I'll just speed that up, I guess. All right. So the board is in the case. It's all screwed in. It looks beautiful. You can see very clearly. You can see everything is there. Everything lines up nicely. And uh, it's looking good so far. Okay, so the next thing we want to put in here is uh, I guess we'll put the LEDs into the face. So we'll set this one aside here and we'll bring the face in. So the face needs the LED board and I've already pre-assembled the LED board and that's this guy here. So it's it's just the, the little PCB and I use clear LEDs. Um, I like the red and blue combination. I know some people want red and green this is my drive, so I like it red and blue, so I get red and blue. So th this is all wired up with the appropriate connector for the PCB. And I've lined everything up so it just goes in there and gets screwed in place. So we'll do that next. that's it that's uh, it's all installed you can see the little LED board in behind and you can't see the LEDs because they are as clear as the case but uh, I also chose wire colors that I liked I used uh, I used a silicone wire silicone wire something that's very flexible and uh, and will plug in nicely won't crimp and it'll look good through the case. Again, uh, when I built the board, it was originally designed for the, uh, the acrylic case, so I wanted it to look nice anyway. Uh, but then this, this clear 1581 case idea came along and PCB way to the rescue. They made an outstanding case and, uh, and now it's gonna look even better. Right, so this is attached, and we will now attach this to the lid. I just have to adjust the camera. So this will just attach, uh, as I had discussed before, it goes into that little groove. rotates into place. So there, that part is assembled now and the wire is in place. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the drive to the drive support. So I chose uh, a nice gray faced disk drive that wasn't beat up and it looked nice because you can be able to see it through the, through the, uh, 
through the case. This is an SFD 321B that I used. There's a couple of different 321Bs. Uh, I particularly like the one that has the little screw in the corner here. I've been more successful in converting that particular version rather than the one that doesn't have the screw here. I'd also stay away from the ones that don't have a little screw here because the vias and traces on the, the data connector on the underside of the PCB, they tend to break. So on the majority of the older style, I'm calling it the older style, I think they're probably the older ones, the SFD 321Bs without the screw, many of them, the vias had broken free and torn the traces on a number of points on those connections, whereas they improved the board on this one, I doesn't have that problem. So I like using the SFD 321B, it's real easy to convert. And the one with the little screw has a nice robust board on it. So to attach this, it's quite simple to do. The, the narrow part of the mount goes towards the front of the drive. So the front of the drive is on my right. So I just attach it like that and I put screws from the bottom and the, those will get threaded in and hold the drive where it needs to be. So I'll just speed through this. You don't have to watch me. Okay, so the drive is now attached to the mounting plate that sits inside the drive. So we will bring the drive board back here and we will place this in. So my head might end up being in the camera a little bit, but I am going to go fast while I secure these screws. It's a little bit finicky, you have to use tweezers and, and a hex key, but uh, I get that done and I'll go fast and then uh, we can see what it looks like there and do the remaining connections. Okay, the drive is in now. It's, all the screws are in. You saw I had to use tweezers in order to get them in because it's a little tight in there and my fingers are not as skinny as they need to be. So, uh, so that's all installed. So now you can see the, the drive has the board. The board is in the case. And the drive is attached to the case through the transparent mount, which is really nice. And we'll move on to the rest of it where we have to hook up the power and the data cable. So let's do that next. Okay, the, it's very straightforward to hook this up. I have a power cable here and I have the data cable. So we'll start with the power. We'll hook that up first. That plugs on there. And then this just plugs onto the connector there. That's done. And then there's just a matter of hooking up the drive. Okay, so I've struggled with the data cable to try to make it look nice. Um, it'll look as nice as it, as it can be. It has to twist in order to get onto the board. Uh, I've, this is a converted drive, so maybe it's not the nicest um, looking fold but it'll do. So there's a little bit of play on this drive. It can slide forward and backwards a bit. This design uh, with this drive it slides you have to slide it all the way forward and then uh, lock it in place. So it's slid all the way fold forward here and then we just tighten the screws. That should be okay. So tighten all four screws here place. Okay, so 
that is it. So last thing we have to do is we have to hook up the little display board, the front here, and plug that into the board. So let's do that next. Then the last part is we will set this in and rotate this down. It's locked into place and flip this over and we'll put the two screws in that hold the board or hold the case together. So there we go. The drive is in and we have a completely transparent 1581 drive. And I have to say, now I haven't assembled this. Honestly, I never assembled this before doing this video. So I've been really looking forward to doing this. And I have to say, it looks fantastic. It looks as wonderful as I had hoped it would. I mean, you can see everything. It's crystal clear. You can see into the case. You can see everything that's going on inside. You're not hiding anything with this case. You can see the board. Everything is just very clear. And now we get to see what the LEDs do together. So let's do that and we'll plug it in and we'll see what it looks like. Look at that. And the drive behaves like it should. So the data connection's right, board's still fine, and the lights just shine through. Look at that. That looks phenomenal. I am so pleased. I'll have to definitely take some pictures and post them around on uh, social media as well and uh, see what people think this is this is the nicest 1581 that I've I've ever seen so now the uh, the big question is what would it cost I turn it off turn it back on so you can see what the blue light on it looks like it looks really nice so this case costs 220 US dollars just for the case plus shipping. Now, yes, it's a lot of money. It really is. Um, you can do a lot with 220 bucks, but think about uh, what you would spend on a 1581 an old used 1581 on eBay you can spend four or five hundred bucks for one of those drives what is this thing what did it end up costing me well the board the cost of ordering the PCB from PCB way shared projects link is listed below you end up spending like 
40 bucks, something like that. You get a bunch of boards, you get five boards. Sell the other ones off that you don't use. Give them to a friend, whatever. Split the cost with a friend. It really shouldn't end up costing you too much. Uh, the most expensive part on this is probably going to be uh, the, uh, the moss chip that you have to get. But again, I've had a lot of success on eBay with, uh, with moss chips there. So, you know, all told parts maybe cost you a hundred bucks. So maybe you're into 150, drive 10, 20 bucks. They're not very expensive. You can get those all over. And then the case, power supply. You can use the alternate power supply. You don't have to pick up an expensive 1581, 1541-2 power supply. You can just go with a nine volt, one amp wall wart and pick those up cheap anywhere if you don't already have a handful of them in your house. And what you're gonna end up with in the end is you will have spent 400 bucks on this drive. But look at this drive. I mean, it's amazing. It really is. I guess it's uh, whatever you put your put value um, put value on, and the importance of the the sort of thing to you. This is the nicest 1581 I've ever had, and probably ever will have. Do I want to have an original anymore? No, I really don't. I don't see any point. My original can't do anything better than this one does. And this one certainly looks better doing the job. This particular case design that I made, it also has a hole in the back just above the power switch right here. I don't know if you can see it in the, in the, uh, the video, but there's a little hole there. And what I had, um, what I had that there in the design for was for barrel connector for the alternate power supply. In this particular case, um, I didn't use the alternate power supply on here. I've just been powering it with a 1581 uh, power supply. In the end, I'm gonna probably just use my Ray Carlson uh, power supply, which has that power connector on it. So I won't use the internal um, alternate power supply, but I think I will hook up a switch to that hole where I can I showed you earlier where I can uh, hook that up and I can turn the lights on or off if I want to probably never will but you can use use it for that too if you were very careful you could drill an additional hole in the back for a switch if you wanted to use the alternate power supply all the time but that's up to you the builder so that is uh, everything that I wanted to show. I wanted to again thank PCB Way for their collaboration on this project. They were phenomenal. They offer awesome parts. I mean, the boards are fantastic. I've never had any trouble with them. This case is mind blowing. It is so nice. Um, Certainly the crown jewel in my collection of drives. If you love transparent cases, this thing will absolutely not disappoint you. It is beautiful. Um, I think I'll probably shoot some real high res pictures and I'll throw them up on the GitHub that goes along with this project that has the build materials and all the tips and hints that I could think of in building one of these. Um, that's all there. And I'll throw a whole bunch of pictures here so you can see in a lot of detail what this thing really looks like. It's, I don't think pictures will do it justice, but it's, uh, it's better than nothing. So, Anyway, I wanted to thank you for coming along, watching as far as you did. Uh, if you liked this video, I'd appreciate a like. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed and you like the kinds of things that I'm doing. 
and uh, that pretty much wraps it up for today. So again, thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.